Ladies and gentlemen, if I can ask you to uh, please take your seats so we can get this afternoon started. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to what is going to be a very special afternoon. It's one thing to have a Nova Scotia tartan, but to have an Annapolis Valley tartan is uh, a very special occasion. So thank you very much for coming out and sharing in this special occasion with us. Thank you to our pipers, Ed Coleman and Liam coleman Allenbach. Ed was just telling me before they uh, came into the room actually that uh, he actually wrote that song for uh, for our special guest's uh, 90th birthday. So uh, thank you very much Ed for that and actually we'll be hearing from Ed and Liam a couple other times uh, throughout the afternoon. So I'm sure it's pretty special to have uh, Cordy celebrate his 90th birthday with that song. So thank you. At this time, I would like to call upon Reverend Dr. Bob Wallace to come forward to bless the meal. Gracious God, we rejoice in your presence at our table. We are still warmed by the glow of Easter's triumph and we rejoice in the fellowship that belongs to those who gather here today and with the great traditions that inspire us. We thank you for all this and we thank you for food and fellowship that goes with it. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'd just like to uh, take a moment, if I may, to uh, introduce the people that are seated at the uh, at the head table. And if the uh, they would uh, give away as they're they're recognized, I'd like to introduce to you Gene Watson, the creator of Tartan Day. Bria Stokesbury is with us here today. She's the curator of the Kings County Museum. Of course, our guests of honor, Gordon Hansford and his wife, Helen, the creator of the Annapolis Valley Tartan. You know, it's interesting to point out, I was just reading, uh, I actually had a copy of the article that uh, was in the Chronicle Herald, and you know what, this is not something that happened overnight. Gordon has actually been working at this for 30 years to make this happen. So, it's, uh, if anybody wants to read the article, I didn't bring my gla reading glasses with me today, so it's kind of small, but you know, it's, it's a, actually a very interesting article. So, it's been a 30-year project uh, for Gordon, and it all comes to fruition here today. So. A lot of hard work for sure. Also, we're very pleased to have with us this afternoon the MLA for King South, Keith Urban. The officer commanding from Camp Aldershot, Major Brent Kerr. Welcome, sir. And of course, uh, Reverend Dr. Bob Wallace is part of our uh, head table as well, and we certainly appreciate him being here this afternoon with us. 
At this time, I would like to call upon Eric Mappelback to come forward to make some presentations. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, at this time, I'd like to call on uh, Gene Watson, the greater of Turtle Day. Gene, if you come up here for a minute, please. <laughs> for a second. Queen Elizabeth II and on Clan Fur. Thank you very much. <laughs> and uh, call on Susan Hayes and Judy Refuse. Susan saw it here, so I got one. I got one of the two. It's hard to get a good, hard to get a good, good looking girl to pay attention to. You. <laughs> well, I brought my sidekick, Jessie. She's much better looking than I am. <laughs> Don't undersell yourself, here. <laughs> uh, Ernest Stokesbury. speak yellow, I barely speak English, so. <laughs> and I should have announced she is Kings County Museum personnel, the head of it, or somewhere, I don't know sure where. Call on uh, Keith Irvin. MLA for King South, province of Nova Scotia. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Sure, I'll just uh, say a couple words here. I want to thank you very much, first of all, for the invitation and such a wonderful gathering, such a, uh, uh, a wonderful moment, really, to bring, bring into reality a tartan uh, for the Annapolis Valley. Certainly, as uh, your representative in the House of Assembly, I'll be certain to uh, don the Annapolis Valley Tartan tie at some point in the, in the near future to uh, celebrate this. I really want to thank Gordon, uh, obviously 30 years of dedication and, and, uh, and thoughtfulness about, uh, about our region. And uh, when you think about tartans, tartans are all about, uh, about family. Um, I have the Irvine Tartan, I actually don't own a copy of it, my dad does. Uh, Irving and Irvine have a tartan. But the nice thing about a tartan uh, and it being about family is this new Annapolis Valley tartan is now bringing all of us together in this valley as a family. And so we can now celebrate that by wearing our tartan and thinking about ourselves as a family in the Annapolis Valley. So uh, thank you so much, uh, Gordon, for, for this uh, uh, treasure for the Annapolis Valley. Thank you. I'd like to call on Ed Coleman and Wayman Coleman, or Vipers. I don't know how I could have come in this chair, but I couldn't see Well, good luck. Saunders, please. 
from Saunders, Turtons, and Giffins if you mind us. Thank you very much, Eric. At this time, I would like to call upon uh, Bria Stokesbury, the curator of the Kings County Museum, to come forward to introduce our guest of honor this afternoon. Mrs. Hansford just asked me to keep this short, so I'll try to do that. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, it's a great privilege to be here today for Tartan Day and for the um, launch of the Annapolis Valley Tartan. As a curator, um, I'm usually involved with things after the fact, so it's very gratifying to be part of a, a historical event like this. And as I've been saying to people that I've been telling them I'm going to be part, part of this occasion, people will be talking about this 50 years from now, 75 years from now, when they're pulling out tartans that the tartan um, kilt or, or whatever that they've had made out of this, this historic tartan. Well, the reason I've been asked to come and speak today is to introduce Gordon Hansford, although I'm sure 99.9 .9 of you already know Gordy and Helen in some capacity or another. Um, but I was part of a process that started, uh, well, I was asked about a year ago by Clan Donald to uh, help with the, um, the logistics of, of bringing this about by writing a letter of support. And um, part of the application process for the new tartan was sending letters of, of reference and support to the uh, Scottish Registry of Tartans in Edinburgh. And there is a Tartan Act of 2008 that has a couple of stipulations about before something can be accepted as a new tartan. So my letter was um, addressing the applicant's association with the chosen name, in this case the Annapolis Valley Tartan, by illustrating his relationship to, connection with, or interest in the subject. So. Clan Donald asked if I would read a portion of, of the letter that I submitted in, in regard to that. And it'll give a brief overview of, of Gordon and his many accomplishments, and it also explain why he was the perfect person to not only create this, this tartan, but to also name it the Annapolis Valley Tartan. So Mr. Hansford was born in Wolfville in 1924. In 1940, he joined the militia, the 2nd Battalion of the West Nova Scotia Regiment. In 1941, he joined the Infantry Training Center Pipe Band at Camp Aldershot as a drummer. And in 42, he was transferred to the Royal Canadian Ordnance Corps and went overseas in early 1943, where he joined the Royal Canadian Electrical and Mechanical Engineers. You see why I have to read this, because he was involved in so many things. He served for three years in Britain, North Africa, Sicily, Italy, and Northwest Europe. On his return from military service, he attended Acadia University in Wolfville, where he graduated in 1953 with three different degrees, a BA, um, a BED, and an MA, specializing in history and economics. And he went on and had a teaching career of some 30 years, and I know many of you here might have actually had the uh, privilege of having him as a teacher. From 1947 until 1963, he served with the militia in the 146th Battery, the 47th Anti-Tank Regiment of the Royal Canadian Artillery, and the 1st Field Regiment of the Royal Canadian Artillery in Halifax, where he attained the rank of Major. And on his discharge, he received a Canadian decoration. So that's the military side of things. He's also had a distinguished career in the um, serving his country as an educator and also on the volunteer front. So I'll now turn and, and talk a little bit about all his volunteer efforts. He's volunteered with the Victorian Order of Nurses, the Heart and Stroke Society of Canada, the Canadian Con 
Canadian Cancer Society, and the Red Cross. He is a member of the Kings County Retired Teachers Association, having been both a member and a past president, and he is an active member of the West Nova Scotia Regiment Memory Club and the Atlantic branch of the Royal Canadian Electrical and Mechanical Engineers Association. And he continues to hold a membership with the Royal Canadian Legion with the Dr. C.B. Lumsden branch number 74 in Wolfville, where he, was been, he has been past president. He is a member of the King Scott Pipe Band as a piper and, a member of the King, and has been a member of the King's Fiddlers and Dukes of Kent. He is a charter member of the King's Historical Society, of which I'm representing today, and he is also an honorary member of the Fieldwood Heritage Society in Canada. Now, there's another side of his, his career as well. He's an author, and in the last two years, I think it's been since he published his memoirs of his wartime experience, called The Craftsman Remembers, and also his first book of poetry, a collection of valley verses. And as an artist, he also illustrated his book of poetry. Many of you are probably aware of his skill as an artist. He's a painter, he's a carver, and he also creates coats of arms. He was asked to create the coat of arms for the towns of Wolfville, Bridgewater, the municipality of Kings County, Kings Tech Campus of the NSCC, and the local fire departments for Halls Harbor and New Ross. And he also designed the coat of arms for the Kings Historical Society and the Kings County Museum. So there can be no question that Gordon Hansford exemplifies the best of the Annapolis Valley, nor any greater evidence of his sufficient and substantial association with this place than the life that he has lived and the contributions that he has made. In 2003, I had the great privilege of being asked to write the foreword for his book of poetry. And in this, I tried to capture the essence of what makes Gordon so special and why he's such a cultural treasure. I meant to do this at the very beginning of my speech, but before I forget, I do want to add that one of the reasons that Gordy can be, Gordon can do and be everything he is is because of the wonderful support of his wife, Helen. So, behind every great man, there's a great woman. So in the foreword to his book, I wrote, um, I'm only one of a legion of friends and fans of this horse of nature. Wolfville native, World War II veteran, Husband, teacher, historian, musician, artist, craftsman, storyteller, author, and poet. I went on to say that his, his poetry is inspired in part by the nature, by his love of nature and his much loved Annapolis Valley. I concluded my letter to the Scottish Registrar by saying, in the creation of a tartan, pa tartan pattern inspired by his beloved Annapolis Valley, Mr. Hansford has bequeathed one more gift to the people of Nova Scotia and inspired us yet again with his boundless energy and sense of place. Now at this time, uh, originally um, Lewis McKinnon, who is the Executive Director of Gaelic Affairs for Nova Scotia, was supposed to be here to present a scroll to Gordon. And uh, he was going to be making his speech in Gaelic. Well, Gordon is a wonderful teacher, but despite over the years trying to teach me several words of Gaelic, uh, even Gordon gave up. So I thought, well, maybe I can learn a few words of Gaelic, but then I realized that there's a wonderful teacher of Gaelic in the audience today, a lady who's probably well known to all of you, and I thought if she wouldn't mind, her name is Merdina McRae, joining me at the podium and just saying congratulations in Gaelic and a few words to Gordon. Uh, it would be much appreciated by me because I don't want to be known as the curator that mangled the Gaelic language in front of a room full of Scottish descendants. So that just it says that we are all glad to be here today and we congratulate God <coughs> on this wonderful tartan that he has created. And of course we mustn't forget Helen. <laughs> Just to come up for a quick verse. This is for you, Gordon, because you know this tune. You can play it on the pipes. <laughs> <laughs> 
again thank you for uh, creating this lovely lovely tart for all the people of the Annapolis Valley it's it's a wonderful legacy Scotsman and semi-Scotsman and Irishman and everybody else. <laughs> and and uh, it's a great feeling. Uh, first of all, I want to thank the Clan Donald for all of the what uh, all of the work they've gone to uh, to uh, get this organized. I'm not an organizer myself. Uh, Helen says I'm a disorganizer. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, they, they are organizers and they did a great job. And also I'd like to uh, say, uh, give you a little, pra a little praise for uh, Don Saunders, who has done a great job of getting this tartan woven in Scotland. And, uh, and it's, it's, a, it's a pleasure to see you. It's a wonderful thing. If you don't mind, I'll give you a little poem I wrote one time. I'm, I do this sort of thing once in a while. I've got nothing else to do. <laughs> anyway, uh, the way it goes is this. Cape Breton has just had a tartan of which it's justly proud. Victor County has a has a Hector Tartan too. See my memory is not hundred percent. Ninety-eight percent. But the old and out was valley is a tartan of its own. And the story of that tartan I'll tell you. <clears throat> It is the grain of trees and crops that our farmers love to grow. Gordon, that's for you. <laughs> Gordon Conrad, you're a great farmer, great farmer. And there's the mountains, the, uh, the blue of the mountains, north and south. There's the silver of two rivers that flow down to the sea. And the bright red blood that was shed to keep us free in all of the conflicts that our people from the valley have been in. And thank you very much. Uh, 
You don't know how I appreciate this. Thank you very much, Gordon. I put another round of applause for my testimony. At this time, I'd like to call upon uh, Don Saunders from Saunders Tartans and Gifts to come forward to make a presentation to uh, Gordon. Maybe we'll just get you to make it over at his. Uh, if you want to say a few words first. Yep. Thank you very much. I am Don Saunders, that you've heard about here today. and. Uh, we were really excited when Wayne McDonald dropped in to see me to see if we would consider trying to get this tartan made. And, uh, we actually are uh, a representative and, and a distributor for a company called Ingalls Bakken in Scotland. And they were over, overjoyed to make it. <clears throat> we did have a little bit of a time constraint and uh, they guaranteed me they would have it here in time. but. Thursday morning, I was beginning to wonder. <laughs> we were doing tracking on the parcel. It went from Scotland to Philadelphia to Maryville Airport to Dieppe to Halifax, and at noon on Thursday, it arrived at our place. So we, we did bring that side relief then. But uh, I do have a little presentation for Gordon and his wife, which I'll I'll we'll actually get up again and I'll take it over there. But, uh, we were excited to get this done and it's a beautiful tartan. And Gordon, I know, is very proud to have it. What would a Scottish celebration be without some bagpipe music? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back Ed Coleman and Liam Coleman, Coleman Hollenbach. Okay, I will keep this rather short, but I wanted to say a few words for Gordy. So the reason that I'm here today is in thanks to Mr. Gordon Hansford, and personally, music, as always, and always will be, a very important part of my life. And when it comes to bagpiping, uh, I consider Gordy to be a sort of mentor to me, along with my grandfather and um, the pipe major in Greenwood and my parents who listen to me day and in the night. <laughs> and so um, when I was a wee little Scotsman learning the bagpipes, every several months or every year, my grandfather and I would go over to Gordy's house and I would play for him to show him uh, how I'm improving what I'm learning lately, and um, those were always uh, very important times to me, and we would sometimes stay for hours, I'm sure his wife can attest to that, and um, we would play music together just for the fun of it. I remember one time Gordy got out his drumsticks and his drum pad and uh, played along with me, and he would tell me about the history of the ballad, he'd tell me about the things he's done in his life, uh, poetry, and I could, I could tell from that that he's... Um, a very knowledgeable and uh, deep person, and he's had a lot of life, ex uh, life experience. It's very inspiring. And uh, so now he's made it past 90 years, and cheers to an upcoming 100. So, um, so I only planned about up to here in my head like 20 <laughs> minutes ago. And, uh, but really, Gordy, I'd like to give you a heartfelt thanks. Really, you've, you've been very kind and generous to me. Uh, you gave me your bagpipes, the first pipes that I learned to play. Um, you've you've uh, gifted me a lot of things, music books, um, this hat badge that I'm wearing right now, and uh, you've been very supportive, and 
Thank you very much for all of that. I can talk that, but uh, <laughs> I, I don't, uh, I mean, my pipes are already doing my talking for me, but uh, I don't think we could get out of here tonight without a Gordy story. <clears throat> He's noted for that, by the way. And just an aside, excuse me, I think I have the same thing as your MC. I think I caught, I caught it from him. Anyway, uh, Gordy is more than just a musician. He, as I found out, after playing the pipes with him for about 30 years, he plays the accordion, harmonica, and the flute, and uh, the fiddle. And I think probably you give him anything, he could get a tune out of it, including a, a pig call. Anyway, uh, we go back about 30 years, we started to play the pipes. And I, I played with Gordy probably 20 years before I found out that David Coleman came over from Cork in 1743. He was my great grandfather. It turned out after a few years, it was Gordy's great grandfather. So just, <laughs> and just discovered that by accident. Anyway, uh, you can't get away without one Gordy story, so here it is. Now, we were playing at Berwick, and uh, one of the most popular bagpipe tunes is Amazing Grace. We could call them on to play them live. And Gordy and I and the band were warming up in Berwick, and along came a truck load of uh, trucks, and people throwing their balls around, screaming out, Amazing Grace, Amazing Grace, play Amazing Grace. Gordy looked down and he said two words and made him shut up. Gordy said, Amazing idiots. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, well, let's turn the audience for you. Great job, gentlemen. Thank you very much.
this time I'd like to call upon Reverend Dr. Bob Wallace to come forward for the uh, blessing of the turn. How many of you know anyone who made a target? <laughs> Hands up. <laughs> One of the more miracle of the valley. And uh, we've had a miracle today in person. That's wonderful. And I'm delighted to be able to bless this wondrous gift in his name. Welcome to our festivity, O Lord God of all nations. We present this day the colors of our history that capture our love for the familiar stories of the past. They have gathered here into a fabric in which is blended the green that fills our fertile valley and the deeper green, that dark growth of the forests on our hills. The blue water sunlit on our rivers and the red that is coursed in the veins of the adventurers who have shaped the stories that support the Gaelic traditions of New Scotland. We have gathered this day to give thanks for this skill and creativity that marks this precious gift. Amen. So we've had the bagpipe music. And I said you can't have a Scottish celebration without having bagpipe music. And there's another thing that you can't have without having a Scottish when you have a Scottish celebration, and that's Scottish dancers. Thank you. We're Duncan and Maggie Kepi um, from the Valley Scottish Country Dancers here, and we're so so very happy to be part of this. Um, we've got a team of dancers ready to perform. Uh, what is a very special surprise for Gordon, he didn't know about this. We choreographed a new dance called the Annapolis Valley Tartan, and we've also done a, a new reel, an original piece of music for this, called the Gordon Hansford Reel. <laughs> Just before we bring the dancers on, uh, this is such a surprise, so, Gordon, I know you're putting you on the spot, but I don't think you'll mind too much, I hope not. Uh, and all the talk of all his many talents, one thing hasn't yet been mentioned, and that is that he plays the bones. And he plays the bones very well, and if you're looking for some fun stories, ask him how he learned to play the bones. I won't go into that now, but he's shared that with us. Some years ago, um, we enjoyed him playing the bones much. Duncan's father used to play the bones too, so we kind of used to talk about it and I've tried it, it's not easy. But I was trying to learn from him and Gordon was kind enough, we had lost one of the bones that Duncan's father had, so we didn't have a full set. And Gordon said, no problem, and he's carved me some from wood and in his amazing way to always make things special, he put my initials on, burning it with the sun's rays Anyway, so these are very special. So as we thought, how can we make sure he has his bones here? Maybe thought, oh, that was spoil the surprise. So we'll bring these. I'm going to bring them over. I saw you talk at the table, trying to get some rhythm going there with the other music. So we're going to. Then he's going to do the tune first and give you a chance to give us a little rhythm, and then we'll bring the dancers on to show you the dance as well. But this is Gordon Hansford's reel.
for uh, loaning the use of the sashes that all the dancers were wearing and were on the music stand and that I have. These are the Annapolis Valley Tartan sashes that he, part of the order that he was waiting for and just arrived at the last minute. But it was a wonderful opportunity to share the tartan with you and they're all on display at the back and uh, so you can speak with him further if you're interested. Thank you very much. I just want to quickly mention, um, before we move along, because I know if you haven't bought tickets yet, you're going to want to once you hear the list of just a few of the items that are in that uh, beautiful basket that's been put together, a beautiful <laughs> basket uh, out at the, at the, at the entrance. Um, it includes a catering gift certificate with a value of $150, of $150, pardon me. Um, 
It's a three course meal for six people. That's just one item. There's also tickets to a concert by the Shire Town Singers included. There's fresh preserves, there's wines, there's items from Seagull Pewter, uh, there's edible goodies, there's a book in there, Kings County of Nova Scotia, a quiz book. Uh, two prints of Nova Scotia scenes, <clears throat> and uh, there's gift certificates from Winners and Walmart as well, just to name a few. So if you haven't purchased your tickets for the, uh, the basket as of yet, maybe that little uh, list of which is not everything that's included will uh, entice you a little bit to go buy a ticket again. They're two for five dollars and we'll make the draw before we, before we leave here today. Speaking of uh, something we want to draw attention to, I just want to draw attention to the names on the back of the program. All the, the, uh, the people on the back of that program, those are all people that we want to take a moment to thank for their contribution to this very special day here today. There's quite an extensive list, so rather than take the time to read through them individually, just uh, uh, please make, uh, make note of uh, the, the, the people and the businesses on the back of that list. And uh, thank you very much to all of them for the, uh, the contribution. At this time, I would like to call upon Peggy McNeil to come forward to uh, give a little thank you to some other folks that have helped us over here today. <clears throat> yes, I would like the staff of the Old O to come out if they're available to. I don't see any of them at the moment. I oh, here they come. Good. On behalf of uh, the Valley Branch at Clan Donald and, uh, and everyone here, uh, I want to thank you very, very much. You've made this day a, a lovely afternoon celebration. Uh, your, the meal was taste, very, very tasty, and the service was what, done so well. And we hardly knew you were there, but you were serving us. So we want to. Thank you very, very much from the bottom of our hearts. So, Paula, shall we make the draw for the, uh, the basket now? Okay. To, uh, as Paula makes her way up here, I want to pass along a very special thank you to her for inviting me to be part of this very special celebration this afternoon. I have really, really enjoyed myself, and uh, for a guy that I don't, I don't think there's any Scottish in my in my heritage, but for a guy that doesn't have a whole lot of Scottish in his, in his uh, there's no there, it reads. I don't think that's very Scottish. But anyway, I want to thank you all for uh, letting me be a part of this afternoon. I really have enjoyed myself, so thank you. I, I could mention that my wife is, uh, well, actually she's Scottish and Irish, her last name is Stewart. And the Irish runs out in there every once in a while, it's just the same. She's five foot two, but she's mighty. Dig nice and deep into the bottom here. And it's the person holding ticket number 556. Zero five two zero. Oh my God. <laughs> five five six zero five two zero. Do we have a Paul just asked me to mention that if there's anybody that would like to have a copy of the scroll, um, thank you very much for my copy, by the way, it's very much appreciated. But if you would like to have a copy of the scroll, Paul has asked that you uh, leave your email address at, uh, at the guest book and they'll make sure that you, uh, that you get one. Okay, we're going to wrap up the afternoon with one more song on the bagpipe, so please welcome back to conclude our wonderful afternoon, Ed Coleman and Liam Coleman Hollenbach. The pipers just suggested that perhaps we pipe Gordy out, and I think that would be a wonderful idea. So if Gordon and Helen want to uh, 
Join the pipers, we'll, we'll pipe you out in style. Thank <laughs> you.